the first slide we're going to be tying is a squirmy wormy. We're going to have a size 12 jig hook. And remembering these are just the flies and materials I'm using back home. You can use whatever you have available. Any standard nymph hook is going to work. I tend to tie a lot of my, my worm patterns on a larger size 12 hook. We're using a tungsten bead with this. Tungsten beads weigh twice as much as the brass beads that we tied in class, but they also cost twice as much. So if you're on a budget, once you graduate, keep things incredibly simple. You can tie this fly even without a bead and then just use a tiny inexpensive piece of split shot to help get this fly to sink. That will still catch fish. This is just a personal preference. I tend to use tungsten on most of my flies, most of my nymphs, just because that bead is often all the weight I need to get the fly down. We're using a 140 thread, which is thicker than the 70 we're often using in class for two reasons. One, we're going to create a little bulk here on the back side of this hook to, allow, to eliminate the bead from sliding back. And then second, when we finish this fly off, we're going to tie this fly off right here at the top. The greater the cavity, meaning if I had a bare hook shank in the bead right there, there would be a significant valley in here. When I come in here and tie this fly off, that material is going to be sticking straight up. So what we're going to try to do is create a thread dam, kind of taper this off a bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, but now when you tie this down here, the swarm material is more likely to go out rather than straight up. Does it really matter? Not exactly, but it's more for the aesthetics in my opinion. We're going to wind down, covering the hook shank. Taking our time. And we're going to lay the back end. Dirty water, I'm going to use kind of longer sections. I want to create a better visual for the fish to find these flies. So we had some recent rains. I want to fish a big worm this morning when we're on the water. So we're going to do a pinch technique with this material. And what you'll find here with this material, this is a very fragile latex. If I just make one hard wrap and pull straight down on this material, you're going to cut it. What I'm going to do is make one soft wrap on the back side, loose wrap, and then slowly just create a little bit more tension. Now go on the front side. Kind of locking this in place. Okay, not bad. Now proceed to wrap your thread forward. We're going to be laying this latex worm material on this hook shank, so create a nice base. Kind of hold this back. This gets a little, takes a little getting used to. But we're going to make one wrap just slightly on the last wrap, on the la basically the last third of the wrap. We're going to do a little over overlaying. I'm going to wrap all the way up to the front side until we come up to the bead. Here, we can squeeze one more wrap in here. Okay. Now once I make this final wrap, we come around behind. Slight tension, we're not pulling down too tight. Maybe one more. Now we can kind of go on the front side, kind of lock that in. I'm going to lay this back half, if I can, backwards. Make a few more wraps. I'm going to make my cut about the same length. And when you cut this material, don't pull tight. If you pull the same tight and you make a cut, it's going to be incredibly short. So just kind of hold it out under a minimal amount of tension and then make your cut. When in doubt, go long. So in case it is too long, we can just shorten this up. Now we do our whip finish. One, two. And there you have it. This is a squirmy wormy. Likely one of the top producing flies. Anytime you have a recent storm event, dirty water, a lot of your aquatic earthworms are going to be out and about, and these fish are going to be just chomping at the bit to eat a worm.
Next pattern we're gonna tie is the ecstasy egg. Eggs, and don't let anyone tell you, especially some of these purists will say, well, I don't fish eggs, that's not fly fishing. Eggs are a natural phenomena in nature, just as mayflies, stoneflies, caddis, and other insects are. In a couple weeks, on this small tributary that runs right past my house, I'm gonna hopefully show you some video footage of anything from 14 to 17, 18 inch suckers, just in pods coming up to this tributary and just spawning. This is not a trout stream in front of my house, but if you go anywhere in central PA during the time that the suckers are spawning, it's probably your best hatch of the year. Eggs are a high protein source for fish. And wherever you find pods of suckers, you are going to have a very high concentration of trout. We tied this, we tied a Y2K egg in class a couple weeks ago. That's a great pattern. The pattern that we're tying today is called the ecstasy egg, and it's going to be simpler due to the materials that we're tying this with. Staying with still a scud egg style hook with a wider gap, so when you build this egg, you still have a hook point to allow you to hook the fish that's exposed. We're going to tie this on a size 14 hook with a little brass or a tungsten bead. Again, don't need the tungsten bead, don't need a brass bead, you can just tie this on a bare shank. I like to use the weight of the fly to get the flies down rather than having you split shot. With this material, it is a chenille style. And just like with the green weenie, before we tie in, what I'm going to do is just take some of the, the tip of this material, just kind of pull that chenille off so we have a bare cord. We're going to trim this. We're going to take our thread halfway down the hook shank and we're going to tie in right there at that point. Some tension. And remember, with the 140 denier, you can lock this nice and tight. Don't be afraid. It's always good practice. Just make a couple good wraps. Practice your thread tension. Know the break in strength. If you break off, no big deal, but you can put a lot of torque. Look at that hook shank just kind of wiggle. We can lock that in nice and tight. Now with this material, all we're going to do is once we have our bead and our thread wrapped up to our tie-in point, we're just going to make several wraps, keeping this under tension, slight tension. And as I make each wrap, I can kind of just take my fingers and kind of pull these fibers back, but we're going to make one wrap, not on top, but right in front of the last, to the point where all we really need is maybe just two full wraps. Now with this, once you have your two full wraps, you just need to kind of split these fibers, giving you a, a nice valley or a gap to kind of pull your thread through so you're not creating too much bulk. Create a little separation in there. Shoot the gap and just lock that in between the material and the bead. Okay, two tight wraps. Take your th scissors, cut. Pull any of these fibers back. Tie it up, shorten up the distance between your bobbin and your bead. We're going to do two whip finishes. And the other thing you can do to kind of give this like a blood color theme, you can use a bright red as well. Any color thread will work with this. But this egg pattern is just a simple, very effective pattern for all of you to use. And that ecstasy material that you're using is going to hopefully simplify your process. And you can pack a good number of these out in a couple minutes. So there it is. The ecstasy fly, a variety of different colors, but don't forget, the egg is going to be one of your, probably your best allies when you're trout fishing, especially during the sucker spawn. Good luck. All right. Okay, to tie this mob, very simple pattern. We have a size 10 hook. This is a jig hook. Remember, any hook can work. You don't even need a bead but relying on the tungsten bead to kind of get most of the weight built into my rig. I can use just the weight alone of this fly to achieve the depth. We're going to use a 140 denier. And then off your new toy, you can take these little cylinders off this mop, snip, and that is our body. This is sometimes borderline cheating, but it just is such a good pattern. 
when you have really dark stained water, and we, we talked about the worm, we talked about the egg being good and dirty water, but when you have really dirty water and you're on the stream and you're just forced to fish the hand that you're dealt, this is just a great pattern. And it works in clear water as well, but this tends to be a really dirty water pattern for me. Creating a base layer of thread down the hook shank, we have our tie-in point. We're gonna kinda lay this right on, leave, leave a little bit of the overhang to create a tail. Just again, create enough profile. We're gonna do our pinch technique once and twice. And pulling straight down, maybe one more, zigzag it in and out. Really pulling that front tag back, making a couple tight wraps. Really cranking on this, even with the 140. We're gonna to proceed to wrap forward. We have this little cavity between the shank and the bead. This is where we're just gonna take our chenille, lay on the front side, take our thread, just wrap behind, pull down tight, pull that into the direction of that cavity with the bead three times and then wrap forward. Take your scissors, following kind of the angle from the bead, from the bead over to the chenille, just make a clip. Do a little trim there, do a little trim there, and there we are. A couple more thread wraps to lock that in place. But right there is the mop. It is such a good pattern. And again, this is just one of those patterns where the worms and eggs are a natural part of the system, this pattern, I have never seen anything in the stream situation that even closer resembles this pattern. But this is where we just need to stop overthinking. A lot of times we always try to rationalize and create theories about why flies work. This fish, this fly just catches fish. So that's all we need to know about it. We don't need to think about why fish eat it. All we do need to know is that it is a deadly pattern and it should be part of your arsenal if you wanna catch fish in a wide range of conditions, especially in dirty water scenarios. So there you are, there's the mop.